Good day and welcome to the webinar. Uh, my name is Todd Baggett and thank you for joining us. Uh, together with GAIA Global Technologies, we're hosting this three-part webinar series designed to help you better understand two of Oracle's logistics products, WMS, Oracle's integrated full feature warehouse management system, and MSCA, mobile ch supply chain applications providing real-time validated data entry using the same wireless mobile computers as used with WMS. Today is an overview of WMS and uh, help is focused on helping you assess whether WMS or MSCA is best suited to your needs. On April 5th, we will explore WMS in more detail, and then on May 10th, we will turn our attention to MSCA. Redline Solutions and GAIA Global Technologies are both Oracle Gold Partners. We collaborate to provide complete turnkey WMS and MSCA implementations. This is our area of specialization, and we offer implementation services, uh, logistics savvy resources to augment your existing team, and all of the wireless network, mobile computers, barcode printers, labels, repair, and support needed to get you launched and keep you running. Today's opening comments will be from Oracle's SEM Logistics Solution Architect, Mike Rudolph. Next will be Amin Sikander discussing how WMS and MSCA differ and observations about where each fit. I will wrap up today's session with an overview of the hardware infrastructure requirements for supporting WMS and MSCA. Now I'd like to introduce Mike Rudolph, who is an Oracle SEM Logistics Solutions Architect. Mike is a key resource to Oracle's ASM and BCE teams as he works with clients to assess their needs and provide solutions recommendations. Oracle's WMS business continues to be strong, which means Mike is a very busy man. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Mike Rudolph. Thank you, Todd. Uh, this is Mike Rudolph speaking. As uh, Todd said, uh, I'll be uh, spending about uh, 10 minutes or so uh, talking about uh, warehouse management uh, and mobile supply chain. Um, of course, the obligatory uh, Oracle Safe Harbor statement for everyone. Um, what I've kind of uh, got structured is um, just uh, a few minutes talking about overall capabilities of the two products and where they sort of fit in uh, in relation to each other. Uh, then to talk about uh, what they have in common, common infrastructure, common in, uh, uh, integration points. Uh, then uh, turn to what differentiates or what uh, uh, differences functionally anyway uh, between the two products uh, there are. And then just kind of wrap up with uh, a couple of minutes uh, observations on uh, uh, when to position one or the other uh, and advantages uh, uh, that both may have. So in terms of uh, overall capability, uh, really within the e-business suite, uh, the inventory module kind of forms the basis for, for tracking inventory. Now, inventory is good, but it is limited to desktop forms. Um, you know, inventory and, and the associated functions uh, in purchasing, in order management, uh, and such, allow you to receive and deliver and count and ship and and operate a, a facility, but um, they they really uh, are limited uh, to desktop forms. The next step up from that is mobile supply chain. What mobile supply chain uh, applications or MSCA uh, does is it adds uh, the real time mobile RF capability uh, to those transactions. So. Um, the very same transaction set that the inventory module delivers, just taking those transactions and making them available on a mobile RF device. So the, the big uh, win with mobile supply chain is those transactions can be done in real time versus what's common with the inventory module by itself where someone uh, actually performs the transactions physically, maybe makes some notes on a piece of paper, walks back to a desktop and then actually does the transaction uh, at some, time, uh, some point later than when they uh, physically did it. With mobile supply chain uh, applications, the uh, physical performance of the transaction uh, is right in sync with the uh, uh, systematic uh, transaction. The next step up from that is to use um, our warehouse, uh, warehouse management module. And what this does is it takes all the capabilities of mobile supply chain and adds rules-based optimization, uh, paperless uh, RF tasking, wave planning, labor analysis, and a number of other uh, features. 
um, these days uh, with release 12 uh, and such. Um, warehouse management also includes something called WCS, which is a communications layer for interfacing to automation. Automation could be in the form of uh, carousels, storage and retrieval system, sortation conveyors. So as you kind of walk up the complexity chain, we uh, try to give you a wide variety of choice so that you can deploy the right application for uh, that facility's needs. Some facilities might need just inventory if they're small and simple. If you want RF uh, real-time transaction capability, use mobile supply chain at MSCA. If you've got uh, very robust needs, uh, complicated fulfillment, uh, use warehouse management. And if you have a very high volume facility with automation, uh, use the WCS layer with WMS. So a full gamut of choice and capability uh, when it comes to uh, the various uh, modules. Both uh, warehouse management and MSCA are integrated. They're not bolt-on modules. So they share uh, a seamless integration with the rest of the e-business suite. Uh, they share the same architecture, uh, and they share the same data schema. So when you're performing transactions in MSCA or WMS, via the seamless integration, that data is posted immediately without delay so that other modules within EBS can act upon it. So whether it's a receipt that's being done uh, that uh, purchasing or procurement may be interested in, whether it's a PIC confirmation that order management and, and shipping execution might be interested in, um, whether it's a manufacturing transaction to do a completion or to issue some uh, components to a job. Um, uh, also with quality, if you're doing a, a quality collection plan using the mobile device. All of these things are directly uh, integrated. Uh, the benefit there is that uh, there's no um, uh, time required to actually stand up any interfaces. Uh, and uh, there's not the additional cost, both in initial cost, time and money, but also support uh, as time goes on. Uh, there's, there's none of that uh, required because there's no interfaces uh, between these uh, uh, modules. It's seamlessly integrated with uh, eBusiness Suite. WMS and MSCA do share, in addition to the same architecture, the same uh, RF infrastructure. So the same sorts of transactions you might do for uh, receiving inventory, shipping, uh, manufacturing, quality, all those same transactions are posted to EBS through the use of RF devices. Those RF devices can use graphical uh, interface. You, there are also voice options these days for uh, using on these devices via wireless link through the LAN-WAN uh, connection inside your facility back to what's called the mobile transaction server. This mobile transaction server is the same infrastructure that's used for both MSCA and WMS. So what this means to you is you can deploy uh, in a mixed mode both applications and you can also uh, switch or upgrade from one to the other uh, pretty easily because they're sharing the same architecture and the same infrastructure. All that leads to a lower uh, cost of ownership overall because you don't have multiple configurations to support uh, multiple types of, uh, of RF uh, infrastructure to support. In terms of differentiation, where warehouse management and mobile supply chain uh, differ somewhat is um, that warehouse management really brings to the table uh, quite a bit more capability because it's intended for use in more robust facilities that are more complex. So if we look at some of the characteristics uh, that uh, warehouse management uh, can add on the inbound side, uh, things like license plate enabled receiving, uh, recognition that there are containers or pallets, um, the use of rules, uh, whether to put away a product according to a, a storage strategy, whether you want to cross dock it, uh, do some advanced routing, or uh, enhanced labeling. If there's compliance labeling or other types of labeling uh, that you need, uh, that's all enabled by a warehouse management. Other things warehouse management brings to the table, uh, task dispatching, some advanced replenishment techniques. So beyond just min and max uh, reorder points, some very sophisticated demand-based replenishment uh, capabilities. Something called opportunistic counts, which is a, a count uh, in the middle of uh, picking uh, or a count to zero. Um, 
enhanced labeling, labor analysis, and of course the automation uh, layer. And then on the outbound side, this is really where we see uh, customers uh, making the choice between WMS and MSCA is, is if they really have very robust needs on the outbound fulfillment side. So what warehouse management uh, uh, brings to the table above and beyond mobile supply chain is, in addition to the standard pick release process, a wave planning process that lets you what if things, that lets you uh, test, allocate, and plan, and look at the results without actually releasing the, the orders. Uh, more sophisticated pick allocation rules, more advanced picking strategies, uh, rules for cartonization, the ability to model containers and license plates uh, throughout the picking and packing process, and then the ability to uh, monitor trailer loading using the RF devices. So these are all things that warehouse management really uh, adds uh, to um, uh, the base set of uh, functionality that mobile supply chain has. In terms of uh, advantages to both and, and positioning one versus the other, um, advantages of both really are that um, they're integrated with the rest of the uh, uh, e-business suite. Uh, they have a common architecture, so that leads to a lower, uh, lower total cost to implement and support. Um, both uh, provide real-time RF transactions. Can't really stress this enough because I, I do see a lot of inventory-only customers that are still operating in kind of a, a paper uh, uh, and pencil mode with desktop, and and that's okay. Uh, you know that can be made to work, but um, really taking the latency out of those transactions and posting them immediately uh, really helps improve uh, operations quite a bit. Uh, and then um, another advantage I think is that you can deploy uh, both of these or either of these depending on your facility needs. So if you have a small facility uh, that's simple, uh, maybe it's a manufacturing facility, you can deploy mobile supply chain to get that real-time posting of transactions and, and real-time issuances of material and completions. Whereas maybe over in the distribution facility, you've got a more sophisticated operation um, and you could use uh, warehouse management. Um, you can deploy um, both simultaneously uh, facility by facility, uh, depending on what the, uh, the needs of that facility are. In terms of uh, characteristics, uh, what I see uh, out in the field quite a bit with mobile supply chain installations is um, they tend to be what I characterize as small to medium facilities. So typically less than about 100,000 square feet, usually uh, less than about 10 users. And remember here I'm talking about a facility. So uh, we do have customers that have hundreds of mobile supply chain users, but they also have many, many facilities. So I'm really talking more at a facility level. What's the level of complexity of the operation of that facility? What's the size? What's the uh, operator headcount? How much leverage can you uh, uh, bring to bear uh, by having people operating in a, in a real-time mode? Um, most mobile supply chain installations tend to be a, a lower uh, item number count, lower SKU count, um, tends to be lower fulfillment complexity. Uh, and uh, what I see with MSCA is it's very common to start using MSCA in manufacturing facilities, taking advantage of the fact that uh, MSCA can be used for both inventory transactions as well as manufacturing and uh, quality transactions. Um, that usually is a, is a very uh, quick bang for the buck um, win is to start uh, in a manufacturing facility. Warehouse management, uh, on the other hand, uh, usually see the, the uh, warehouse management deployed in, in larger facilities, uh, greater than 100,000 square feet, usually 20 plus users, uh, typically higher volume, usually uh, order line fulfillment, uh, uh, daily fulfillment in the thousands of lines, um, uh, item counts uh, anywhere from uh, uh, maybe in the high hundreds uh, up into the uh, six digits for the number of different items stocked. Um, uh, another thing that really drives uh, WMS uh, to an installation to a facility versus MSCA is really if there's an emphasis on fulfillment. So the, the whole um, uh, set of functionality that warehouse management can bring to bear um, really expanding on pick release and, and, and uh, adding the ability to do waves and wave planning, uh, that really, uh, if there's an emphasis on fulfillment, that's really where I see uh, warehouse management used quite a bit. And then uh, if you hear uh, from a customer that uh, license plate level tracking is uh, very important, that pretty much uh, uh, de facto kind of drives you to warehouse management since 
warehouse management supports license plates, whereas uh, mobile supply chain does not. So just a very quick kind of run through uh, overall capabilities, um, how the products uh, are similar in terms of infra infrastructure and architecture, how they're different in terms of functionality, and then um, you know some advantages to, that apply to both regardless of which one you deploy, and then just some observations, characteristics of uh, deployment uh, installations uh, for both. Thank you very much. Uh, Todd, back to you. Very good. Well, thank you so much, Mike. I uh, really appreciate that uh, uh, overview of uh, the differences between the two and how they'll fit. We're now going to go ahead and um, shift over to Amin Sikander from Gaia Global Technologies, uh, who will be walking us through uh, a little more detail on WMS and MSCA. Uh, Amin, are you, uh, uh, are you ready to go there? Yes, I am. Can you folks see my screen now? We can. It's, uh, okay. it's not yet in slide mode, but we see it. There we go. Thank you much, and uh, over to you, Amin. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. My name is Amin Sikander. I head up the value chain negotiation practice for Guy Global. Before we delve deeper into the content, just want to take a couple of minutes to talk uh, about briefly about our company. We were founded in 2006 by some of the architects of Oracle's value chain products. We focus primarily on value chain execution, planning, and promoting. We are headquartered in San Mateo, California, with offices in India as well, which gives us really a global presence. We are currently working on projects in North America, Europe, Asia, and the Middle East. We are an Oracle Gold partner, as well as being a development partner. Uh, we help build integrations and projects in conjunction with Oracle development. This slide really illustrates what we believe differentiates us from other SIs. Our value chain execution team is comprised of folks who help design and build these products in the first place. That combined with decades of consulting experience is really what enables us to deliver the maximum value to our customers. Talking about customers, here are a few of our sample customers. Zebra Technologies, we have been helping them with a multi-year global WMS rollout. We went live uh, in Europe uh, last year, and we went live at all the North American facilities last week, actually. Huawei is another one of our larger customers. Actually, by the time we are done, they will probably be one of the largest terminal implementations in the world with about 2,500 users. Okay, enough about us. The purpose of this webinar is not talk about each feature functionality in detail. That's for the future webinars that we have scheduled where we talk about WMS and MSC in more detail with the case studies. Rather, the point here is to give you a high-level overview of what these products are and what the key differentiators are and how do you decide what's best for you. So let's start with MSCA. What exactly is MSCA? As Mike said, it's essentially a mobile front end for inventory and other modules, such as the manufacturing, quality, receiving, and shipping modules. One thing to keep in mind here is that this is user initiated, not system directed. And I'll touch upon these, this point as we move forward. But what I mean here is that it allows you to perform the transactions that you do on the desktop. It does not direct you to perform tasks like WMS, where it does not dispatch tasks, it does not you know, direct you to optimal storage locators. It's user-directed as opposed to being system-directed. So if you were to take I'm two sorry, we, things. I'm sorry, we had a little technical difficulty. I mean, please keep talking. OK. Thank you. All right. So the two key things that MSCA provides are these. One, real-time mobile transactions, and two, a robust label printing infrastructure that Todd will talk about in more detail later on. The one good thing about the handheld mobile UI is that it's very streamlined. Rather than having one form that tries to solve all the world's problems, you know, as some of uh, Oracle forms tend to do, this is more of a simplified, stripped-down version of the same forms that really allows you to focus on the task at hand. Here, for example, on the left, you see the screens on the desktop that you try to navigate through to do a PO receipt. 
On the right, you see the equivalent transaction on the handheld. As you can see, it's a much to done version. It requires you to enter the information that you absolutely need to perform the receipt. So the user in here would scan the PO number, scan the item number, the several entries they're hitting it to, the quantity, and it's done. We, in fact, have customers, you know, they're, they're not using the actual handheld devices. They bring up the emulator, the emulator, I'm sorry, on the desktop, so that they can perform the same transactions on the desktop just because they find this to be far more efficient than Oracle Forms. Now, what do you get with WMS? Well, a whole bunch of features, as you can see here. And really, I'm just touching on the surface. License plate numbers, rules engine, task and resource management. All these allows you to essentially have a system directed and optimized tasks. The goal of all these features essentially is to have an efficient, streamlined, and high throughput warehouse where you're taking the decision away from the users, not having them have to make all kinds of decisions on the fly as they're doing the transactions, but rather having the system direct them to do what is the most optimal. Before I get deeper into the differences, I thought I'd spend a couple of minutes talking about license plate numbers in particular. And this is because it's one of the first things that comes up every time we talk about these two products, the fact that we get license plate numbers available in WMS, but not with MSCA. Now, some of you folks here are probably well versed with license plates already, but others may not. So let me just take a, a couple of brief minutes here. An LPN essentially is a unique ID that identifies a grouping of items. Could be a pallet, could be a carton, a tote, or just another grouping of items. It may not be one item, could be a mixture of items. On the top right here, you see a typical representation of the most common form of LPNs used, this is a bad LPN, where you have a ballot and the license plate number uh, at the bottom. Why do you need LPNs? They allow for much more efficient movement of material. If you want to transport material from one location to another, it allows you to move multiple items, serials, or lots at one scan, as opposed to having to enter all the details. It allows you to perform extra receipts and really cuts down on your inbound time. It provides for better trackability. You can, rather than just having material tracked at a locale level, you can segregate that further down to LPNs and track it at that level. Gives you better status control. You could put LPNs on hold, or you could allocate specific LPNs based on your requirements. And really, it reflects the physical reality better of how you actually store and ship your products. So for example, if you're shipping cartons out as parcel shipments, each carton could be associated with an LPN, which could then be tied to a tracking number, and that uh, gives you better trackability and shows you what you actually shipped. Now, as soon as I'm done talking about what LPNs are, the next question I usually get is, does everything need to be an LPN? If I use WMS, do I have to go out and pack everything that I have right now? I'm forced to use LPNs everywhere. And the simple answer is no. LPNs in WMS, are really mandatory only in two scenarios. One, for direct put away. If you want the system to direct the user to store this material in the most optimal storage locator, then you need to use the LPNs. You need to receive the LPN, scan the LPN, and the system will then direct the user to store that in the best place possible. Second, during picking, as you're picking for multiple orders and deliveries, WMS requires you to pick these into different LPNs so that the material that is staged is segregated by order and delivery. It makes it easier to track. Apart from that, really, you're not forced to use LPNs everywhere. You could have subunitaries that, that are completely non-LPN controlled. An example of that are your forward pick zones, where you're picking your, your small, like small quantities, onesies and twosies. Those are typically non-LPN controlled. You could also have a sub-entry with a mixture of LPNs and loose material. The point really is that you use LPNs where they drive efficiency, not where they get in your way. Let's take a simple example of material movement, and this illustrates more of the difference between MSCA and WMS. Let's assume you want to do a sub-transfer. You want to move a particular product from one locator in your warehouse to another. On the left, you see the sub-transfer to a screen that you would use on the handheld to perform that transaction. 
the user had to enter the item, the source subunitarian locator, the quantity, lot and series, if that was applicable, and then the destination subunit locator. With LPNs, once you scan an LPN, the system already knows exactly where the LPN is located and what the LPN contains. So in order to move that, really all you have to do is scan the LPN and scan the destination subunit locator, and you're done. Next, let's talk about the inbound process. What's different? With MSCA, you're able to perform a wide variety of receipts against POs, against ASNs, against RMAs, and against any interop shipments. You can also do inspections, and you can also do item-based receipts as well. What you cannot do here are the system directed put away. The user would have to tell the system where he's storing the material. Remember when I was talking about the user directed as opposed to system directed, this is one example. The system will not direct the user to put away the material he just received to a locator. Rather, it's the user telling the system what he did. With WMS, you get all the capabilities of MSC and inbound. Plus, you get the ability to do extra receipts. So for example, let's say you have ASNs from your suppliers. These are advanced advanced shipment notices the supplier sends. And assuming that everything is packed into LPNs from your supplier, you can do what's called an explosive feed. You can scan the AFN number in and receive the whole shipment in one shot. To give you an example of how effective that is, we had one customer who went from an average inbound receiving time of over two hours per container, if they were dealing with a lot of serial numbers they had to scan, to about five minutes which was a dramatic improvement in, 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 in labor savings there. Next, you get system directed put away. Once you receive your material in, once you scan the LPN, the system at that point in real time calculates the most optimal locator for that material based on rules that you have defined. You get the ability to do cross-talking, and what that is, is the ability of the system to match the product that you just received to any back orders or any jobs that might be waiting for that product. So rather than having to receive it, store it in inventory, run pick release, pick it again, and move to staging, cross-talking really eliminates all those steps. When you scan the LPN, it checks for any back orders if you're using opportunistic cross-talking. And it directs you to take that to the staging lane where it can be then be married up with the rest of the order. You can also do multi-step inbound processes, you know, inspections, put aways, any value-added services that you have here uh, with WMS, which you couldn't with MSCA. Moving on to inventory maintenance, with MSCA, you can do cycle counts and physical counts. Cycle counts can be based on your ABC classifications, which again can be based on your inventory value, your stock on hand, or a few other parameters. With WMS, you get all of that, plus a few extra features. One, you can do what is called an LPN summary count. An example of this is if, let's say, you get in, uh, you receive pallets in, and you shrink crack them and you store them. When you're doing cycle count, if the shrink wrap has not been disturbed, there's really no point to unwrap that and count everything. You can assure the integrity of the package is maintained. You can perform an LPN summary count. You can just confirm the LPN is there. And this cuts down on your counting time, obviously. You can also do task-based cycle counting, where the appropriate cycle count task is dispatched to the appropriate person and sequenced in such a way that uh, traveling across the warehouse is optimal. You can also do opportunistic cycle count. And what that is, is as you're doing a pick transaction, for example, you can define thresholds for items. Let's say, you know, if an item falls below a certain level, let's say a quantity of five, you want to do an opportunistic cycle count. So when a picker is performing a pick and that pick depletes the inventory to below the threshold level, now he's going to be presented with a cycle count task asking to confirm the remainder of the quantity. 
what this gets you is you know you, you get credit for your cycle count and eliminates one looks like one cycle count that you would normally have to do otherwise. What about labeling? And Todd is going to talk a little bit more in detail about uh, the whole labeling infrastructure. But essentially with the MSCA, you get a pretty robust infrastructure. You have the ability to print on demand, and you can print out of the box. As long as you have your label to design, you can pretty much print directly from Oracle to your printers. You can also do automated printing based on business events. For example, if you wanted to have a material label printed automatically, upon receipt, you could do that. With WMS, you get all of that, plus a couple of key additional features. One is the ability to do compliance labeling. This is, if you had a situation, for example, you wanted to print different label formats based on the customer, and you wanted a specific label format for Walmart, as opposed to a different one for Target, you could define those rules so the right label prints for the right task. Plus, you're not limited to the preceded list of label objects that Oracle provides. You have the ability to create your own custom SQL to go and grab any pieces of information that you need to display on that label. Next, uh, this is one of the another key difference between MSCA and WMS in terms of how you manage your workload. With MSCA, you use pretty much the standard desktop Oracle forms to do a pick release, for example. You can pick release based on a variety of parameters, you know, customers, deliveries, trips, dates, so forth. Once you pick release, you know, you then have to go out and execute the stack. There's no uh, proactive action that can be performed here. There's no simulation or what if that Mike was talking about. The WMS, you have three new features that really combine to you know, streamline your, your, your workload balancing and your task and resource management. One is a wave planning. This is the ability for you to create waves of orders that fit your, your resources. So you can create a wave of orders for, you know, for FedEx or uh, for a particular customer. You can look at that wave. You can simulate that wave. You can analyze what task it would get. And you could match that against the resources you have so that you can identify bottlenecks, reallocate resources, and so forth. So for example, if you, if you, if you identify that this wave is going to require a lot of uh, picks from a specific um, subordinate in your warehouse, you could have more people assigned to that section of the warehouse. You could also have uh, a proactive look at any of your back of situation and see if there's anything you can do to improve that. Next, you have a control board that gives you a real-time status update of the tasks that are being performed. How many have been picked? how many active, how many are dispatched, and so on and so forth. And all of these are tied together with the label management piece, which uh, looks at your historical data. It measures how much each task has typically taken. You can match that against your resources to build a better way. And you can also use that to better measure your employees' performance. What about the actual execution processes of the picking execution? With MSCA, once you you do a pick release using the standard desktop forms, it's paper-based. You print out a, a pick slip report that will perhaps have the, the sales order number barcoded on it. You do some manual management of these papers, uh, you know, perhaps sort them by order, by aisle, so forth, hand that to the appropriate resource. The pickers then go out, scan the sales order number, go to the, uh, the source locator, confirm everything they need to, item quantity, and so forth, and complete the pick. The WMS, it's a completely different paradigm. There's no paper involved unless you want it to be. All tasks are dispatched to the appropriate resource at the appropriate locator. Tasks are sequenced so that the user is directed uh, in a picking path that makes the most sense for him, that eliminates the need for him to go back and forth. The picking process is also divided into step process, which really reflects your physical reality better. There's always a pick load phase and a pick drop when you go to the staging lane. And that's what's model with WMS. The appropriate task is dispatched to the user where you can go and scan either the LPM or the item that he's picking. And you can continue, you can load this task. 
you can continue loading tasks as long as he has space on his equipment. Once he feels that his equipment can no longer have additional tasks, he can choose to then drop off whatever he's picked to the destination locators. Now, there's a whole bunch of picking methodologies uh, that Oracle WMS provides. And I'm not going to touch uh, in detail on all of these. But what these provide basically are different execution methodologies based on your order profile. You know, whether you have a large number of orders, whether you have a large number of you know, orders with small quantities, whether you need to pick and uh, pack at the same time. There are different methodologies for each scenario. And you can choose a mixture of these to address your specific requirements. Wave picking is one. Uh, cluster picking is typically used then you want to pick and pack multiple small orders. This one, I'm, uh, let, me, let me talk about this a little bit more in detail to give you an a, a idea of the pick methodologies. Let's say you have a scenario where you have multiple orders, all for the same item, different quantities. Now, with a normal pick methodology or the MSCA, all of those would be discrete tasks, which are to be you know, performed individually. With bulk picking, all these can be combined into one consolidated task. Perhaps all of these add up to one pallet. So a, a task to pick one pallet is this actual appropriate resource. He performs a pick, and then he can drop it off to multiple staging lanes based on the orders, or multiple LPNs if you don't have enough staging lanes available. There's a few more picture methodologies that I'm going to skip past, but hopefully that gave you an idea of the capabilities. Next is uh, the rules engine. And I'm not really doing justification here to the rules engine. It, it really is the heart and soul of the WMS. Uh, it allows you to model your business processes without any customizations. And for example, you can have different strategies for your storage for put away. You can choose to optimize your various utilization, or you can choose to maximize your picking efficiency or some combination thereof. You know, if you have four big zones and bulk, uh, bulk storage, you can model any of those scenarios for put away. Similarly for pick, you can start with a, a simple 5-4 or 3-4 based allocation down to much more complex strategies based on your customer's requirements, based on product classifications, and so on and so forth. Similarly for task types, you can define it, you can break down your tasks into more granular task types that gives you a better feel of you know, the time you need to perform tasks and you know, who can do what. Labels, I already talked about the compliance labeling capabilities. You can also use the Rails engine to do ownership roles based on cost groups, as well as operation plans, which are essentially to model end step processes. If you have more than like, you know, a single, simple one, two, if you have like an end step put away process, uh, you can model that using operation plans. And as I mentioned, the best part of that is that no customizations are required. Oracle's rules engine gives you the capability to model all of these with our existing forms. So what benefits really can you expect with MSCA? One, because of streamlined UI, you'll see a reduction in labor costs. You can, you can do more with less. You'll have better inventory accuracy. We actually had a customer they went from about 65% inventory accuracy to about 98 using MSCA. Because of the reduction in data entry time, you're not waiting for people to come back to the office and enter all the transactions. And you have better visibility to your product, more real-time visibility. And what that leads to, typically, is a reduction in the inventory levels. The scan-based UI reduces any errors due to fat fingering. And all of this leads to better turnaround time and improved customer satisfaction. With MSCA, with WMS, I'm sorry, you get all the benefits of MSCA, but it really takes it to the next level. If you have a, a much more complex requirements or you're much more throughput, WMS is the way to go because you get much better efficiencies and better warehouse space utilization based on your, your put away and storage strategies. Because of the whole task and resource management and way planning piece that WMS provides, you get more throughput and you get better productivity. You also have 
a lot more flexibility with WMS than you have with, uh, with MSCA. If you need to react to changes in your supply chain fast or to your customer's requirements, the rules engine provides you with a tool set that allows you to do so rapidly and real time. And all of this you know, leads to reduction in inventory levels and labor costs. So this is a solution comparison summary chart that I include more for your reference later. Um, I'm not going to touch on some of these. A couple of things I should point out here are, as Mike said, there are no integration costs involved. This is, both these products are built on top of EBS. The only thing I would add to that is if you do have the, the requirement to plug this into a different ERP other uh, than Oracle, then you can do so with the distributed WMS. The infrastructure costs are pretty similar. It uses the same uh, you know, out of handhelds and label printers, and Todd is going to talk about that. The implementation duration with WMS is typically higher than with MSCA. So what is the right solution uh, for you? Well, here are a few factors uh, that you should consider. And we work with a few customers uh, to go through this process. And these are typically the things that we have considered, volume of transactions that you're dealing with, the velocity of your transactions, how fast is your turnaround done uh, for, your, for your orders and for your manufacturing jobs. They will have a size is one, but so is the utilization. For example, if you have a warehouse that's running at about 90 to 95% uh, space utilization, then really you need to run a pretty tight ship uh, in order to be efficient and to have inventory accuracy. The number of users is a rough rule of thumb measure. Uh, as Mike said, now greater than 10 users, it's probably pointing you more towards the WMS direction. But it's not a hard and fast rule. It's really based, um, it's really one of the factors that you should consider in making a decision. If you have any automation requirements, you know, you, you're forced to go with WMS. And finally, if you need more flexibility in adapting to changes, you have to go with WMS. Finally, um, it doesn't have to be one or other, as Mike pointed out. You could have customers that have a mixture of both. And secondly, you can always step up to the right solution. And we have quite a few customers who have done that who have implemented MSCA because they wanted the immediate bang for the buck and they made ROI. And they want to get their users transitioned from a paper-based environment to getting used to handhelds and you know, scanners and the scan-based environment before they took the next step to WMS. The WCS is, part, is not a separate product. It's part of WMS. It's essentially the integration layer that allows WMS to talk to automation equipment such as you know, voice to pick, um, voice to pick, pick to light, carousels, and so forth. With that, I'm going to hand this over to Todd to talk more about the infrastructure piece of this. Thank you, Amin. So we'll go ahead and uh, continue here. So uh, again, my name is Todd Baggett with Redline. Quick uh, background on Redline is we've been around for 15 years. We're a Silicon Valley-based company. Uh, we do a lot of work in wireless networks, mobile computers, barcode and RFID printers, uh, et cetera. Uh, we're a leading data collection integrator for Oracle WMS and MSCA, and we work with all sizes of companies, uh, many of which are Fortune 500 as well as smaller or startup companies. Uh, currently, we have about 45 installations uh, worldwide that are using Oracle, either WMS or MSCA with these mobile devices we've been talking about. Uh, our engineers are skilled in helping customers set this up, and we provide ongoing support for customers in addition to the applications themselves, but just the wireless infrastructure and the mobile devices. Uh, the company has a strong reputation for outstanding customer service, and this shows you um, a little bit more of our, our customer base here for Oracle, that it's largely spread out across the U.S. Uh, with a, a focus really in northern and southern California is where we have our highest number of installs. Uh, our typical customers are larger with multiple sites, and some of our installed customers are names that you would recognize here, including Shutterfly, the online photo company, uh, Verifone, who makes the transaction processors you probably see in your retail stores, uh, Agilent Technologies, Herbalife, and Greenball are all additional uh, uh, 
customers. Uh, so now we're going to shift our focus and look a little bit at the hardware and software required to support the mobile deployment. Uh, what you'll see here on the left is a server, and this is for our MWA server that we'll get into more detail on. We then have the mobile devices and the wireless infrastructure. Uh, this is a basic overview, and what you've got here is you've got your Oracle uh, applications and database. You've got your mobile transaction server, which is really the gateway between these uh, wireless devices and the back end to Oracle. Uh, the wireless infrastructure also needs to have security management in it, and we'll talk a little bit about that, uh, as well as the uh, mobile device management software we'll discuss and the barcode printers. So here's what that might look like in more of an architecture diagram where you've got Oracle R12 up here uh, running WMS or uh, MSCA. You've got your MWA server, which is connected to that, which is then talking to, in this case, a wireless switch, which is managing the wireless network. We've got device management software out here, which is actually making sure we've got the right images on these mobile devices. We have access points that are providing the Wi-Fi coverage. And then the barcode printers, which can be hard connected to your network via wire or can be set up to be wireless. So let's talk for a second about the architecture kind of from the top down. So the MWA server, really um, what this does is it's the mobile and wireless application server that connects the mobile devices to WMS or MSCA. Uh, this is a scalable architecture that has built-in load balancing uh, using the MWA dispatcher and supports both Telnet and GUI clients. These are what the mobile devices typically look like. They're handheld or vehicle mount, and there's different models for different needs uh, of different customers. Uh, if we look at the most commonly used device here, it's the Motorola uh, MC9190G, and this is something that you can use to scan the uh, items either from the forklift or as this picture shows somebody uh, walking up and scanning it directly. Uh, what's interesting about this device is the durability. Uh, it's set up to handle multiple six-foot drops of concrete, uh, has a wide operating temperature range, it's got IP64 sealing, which means it can get some mist or some uh, light rain on it, and it's been uh, tested at over 2,000 one-meter tumbles in uh, a drier type looking thing that they do for testing. Uh, I also want to talk a little bit about the clients on the devices. Again, you have the option of a Telnet client or a GUI client. Uh, again, the Telnets are character-based, whereas the GUI is visual, and you're seeing the, the GUI form here. Uh, the uh, maximum Wi-Fi security for those customers who need maximum um, security, uh, Telnet is the, the avenue that we generally go. Uh, as far as the speed goes, the Telnet's a little bit faster than the, the GUI. Uh, and from a setup time, um, uh, the Telnet, uh, what we do is we build a package that uh, connects the devices for each installation. And on the Telnet, uh, that's about a three-hour setup. And in the GUI, it's typically eight to 16 hours because there's some other components that need to go up on those. Again, those hours that I spoke of are one-time setup uh, for the mobile client. Now let's shift our focus to the wireless network. Uh, we use a switch controller-based architecture, and really what that gives us is a fault-tolerant redundant system, which means that uh, these things are, are taking the intelligence out of the radios and putting them into a central controller, and then we have a backup to that controller that is uh, monitoring the heartbeat of the primary controller, so if there is a failure, it will actually automatically switch over and can be configured to send you an email message to say, hey, the main controller has failed, we're on the backup controller so that you can contact us and we can either get to your advanced replacement out there or depending on the service level you have, send somebody out on site. Uh, the access points, as I mentioned, provide all the connectivity to the Wi-Fi devices and then there's optional wireless security to actually manage um, high security facilities to prevent any type of Wi-Fi intrusion. <clears throat> we also will do a site survey and this is something that is very specific to your facility, and this is where we go in and we actually do some testing with radios and mobile devices to understand for your specific facility how many radios are needed, what specific antennas, and how we're going to connect those and where we're going to connect them within your wired infrastructure. Now let's talk about the wireless device management software. 
Uh, this is a, a add-on. It's not required, but we see that it's used by, I would say, 80 to 90 percent of our uh, Oracle users. It's primarily because they have multiple sites and they can't have an IT support person available at each and every site. So what this allows them to do is have a central console that is actually web-based that they can, the administrator can log into anywhere they have access to the network. And it gives them help desk tools for the remote users, including a remote desktop so that you could actually see exactly what the operator is seeing and guide them through any difficulties that they're having. Uh, it also has another important function, and that is to make sure that these devices all have the same local settings. Uh, every now and then we'll find a sophisticated user in the warehouse who will go in and actually try to change some of the configuration settings on the device. Uh, and I've seen creative things like trying to stream audio so that they could listen to audio or try to stream video, which are big bandwidth uh, consumers. Uh, what's nice about this device management software is you set up a golden image and every time the device logs in, it does a check against that golden image and says, has this been modified? And if it has been, it will actually overwrite that right over the air so that if the, the user's having a problem uh, from something that had been set up by uh, a worker on the prior shift, they can simply reboot and as they bring it back up again, it will uh, load the right uh, configuration for it and get them up and running again. Moving on to the barcode printing, uh, I want to spend a couple slides on this. All of the barcode uses, uh, barcode printing uses the BI Publisher. Uh, Oracle's native uh, data streams are in XML, uh, and the automated labeling can be triggered by specific business events, uh, particularly in the WMS world where you have the rules-based uh, framework that allows you to not only select the label but also determine what's going to be on that label and when is it going to be printed. You can also do direct printing to XML-enabled printers, as well as through uh, print server software, which we're looking at on our next slide here. Uh, Zebra has a product uh, that does this called Zebra Enterprise Connector, and this is really geared for people who are in larger environments where they have multiple printers and they need to have kind of a, a centralized enterprise uh, print server management for all their barcode printing. On the right-hand side, we see kind of a graphical representation of what happens in the XML printers, which is more that you design your label and then you store that in the memory of the printer. And when you, uh, the printer receives its XML stream, it'll identify which printer and which data and which specific label format it's going to print to. Uh, I put together this little chart here to kind of give you uh, an overview of these. And uh, you know, Zebra has its software, uh, and they have the XML-enabled printer and the design software, as well as their enterprise software, allowing us some choices there. Uh, Bartender is another popular uh, software, and they have um, the ability to uh, design labels and print as well, both at a, a local and a enterprise level. Uh, Loftware is another common vendor that we've used, and again, they have a, a product on the enterprise space called Oracle Connector. Uh, as well as the capability to format the labels uh, for your direct XML printing. Uh, we also occasionally see people who say, you know what, I've got another general print server that I want to use, and uh, with enough uh, configuration on that, that can work fine. Uh, most people will separate their barcode printers from their regular network printers just because it's a different type of traffic and they're trying to uh, minimize the uh, amount of, of conflicts and uh, collisions that they'd have from the barcode printer seeing every other print job on that segment. So um, determining you know, which one you use, uh, so for an XML printer, you know, generally we recommend this if you've got uh, one site. You know, if you're doing multiple sites, you're probably a better uh, fit for some type of an enterprise print server. Uh, also, uh, we looked at this and said, you know, if you print you know, more than 50 unique labels, meaning you've got label-to-label -label changes, uh, in general, uh, you're going to need to shift yourself over to the enterprise print server. Uh, the number of printers is a little more arbitrary. It's kind of like the number of users for MSCA, uh, but generally we, we look at this as 1 to 10 for XML at a single site is pretty good. You know, over 10 on an enterprise basis, you're looking more at the enterprise print server. Uh, obviously, the setup time for doing a, a uh, single printer is less. Uh, on the enterprise print server, it's a little more. This can be a little deceiving, though, because each one of those XML printers does need to have the format loaded into it. And so uh, you can do that individually with each printer, or you can use some 
utilities from the printer manufacturer to assist you on that. So um, as far as uh, Redline goes, you know, really we help you mobilize your Oracle R12 and 11i eBusiness Suite implementations. Uh, we actually have a, a, a page that you can go and look at a little bit more of this. You know, we've chosen to work with GAIA Global on a number of our projects quite successfully uh, because of their expertise in the configuration and uh, the actual uh, implementation of the modules themselves. And our strengths have really been more in the lines of setting up all of the wireless infrastructure and providing all of the uh, pre-printed sub-inventory location labels, the training of the users on the infrastructure, the wiring of the actual facilities, and then the long-term support and care of all of those devices. Our strategic partners uh, include Motorola Solutions, uh, which is a leading manufacturer of not only the mobile computers, but also the wireless infrastructure. Uh, Zebra Technologies is our primary partner on the printer side. Uh, Wavelink is the software provider that actually uh, provides the Telnet sessions on the mobile devices and then obviously working with Oracle and the Oracle value chain execution team. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and uh, open it up uh, for questions and answers. Uh, if you would like to ask a question, what you'll see in your uh, window there is that there's a little chat bar that you can enter questions into, and uh, Candace will relay those questions uh, to the appropriate person, and we will answer those for you. So uh, with that, Candace, do we have any questions yet? We do. Uh, help me understand how Redline and Gaia work together. Who does that? Um, I'll take a, a first uh, pass at that, and then, Amin, if you have anything you'd like to add. You know, really what we've done is we've collaborated together to make it easy for the customer to work in whatever way it makes the most sense. In most of our deals where there is the hardware and the integration services, Redline is serving as the prime and Gaia is working with us as the implementator, implementer of the software and kind of the project management role. Uh, we also run into circumstances sometimes where customers already have hardware and don't need that. And in those cases, uh, we'll often have them work just directly with uh, Gaia Global Technologies because we're not adding any, any additional value into that equation. Uh, we also, the, the third scenario could be a customer says, you know what, I've got an in-house implementation team and I just need somebody who really understands the hardware to make sure that my timeline on this project is compressed and I get it right the first time. And in those cases, Redline will go in and actually work with their teams to do the hardware integration. Okay, next question. Have you helped customers make the decision of WMS versus MSCA and what drove their decision? Uh, Amin, would you like to handle this one? Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, uh, we, have, we have done that with quite a few customers. Um, I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, one is uh, Shutterfly, uh, the second is Bloom Energy. Uh, and they started the same sort of parameters, but they went to completely different directions. Shutterfly had about uh, seven warehouse users plus about 30 manufacturing users per site. They had a couple of sites. Uh, really, they compare uh, Oracle, WMS, and MSCA, and um, I believe. Ultimately, the decision came down to the fact that they needed the whole uh, system directed task dispatching. They didn't want to have a deal piece of paper uh, while they were picking, and that really, uh, and that, that with the combined with the use of LPNs is what drew them to um, WMS. Bloom Energy, on the other hand, um, is a, you know, it's a very um, up and coming alternative energy company. They have transitioned really from uh, being in a, more of an R&D shop to a full blown production you know, uh, manufacturing and distribution centers. So their need really was a quick turnaround time. They had some projects that were in the pipeline and they wanted to have the infrastructure in place to handle that. So they decided to go with MSCA uh, and then transition later to WMS. Okay, next question. What is the difference between a GUI and a plain text interface on the mobile devices? I don't know who that's going to be. I Go ahead, Amin. Yeah, essentially the back end is exactly the same. It's the same code. I mean, the, the patches you get for both are the same. What's different really is in the rendering. With the Telnet, essentially, you can use any Telnet client. Uh, we recommend a few, but you can use any Telnet client and perform these transactions. With the GUI, it's a Java-based rendering of the same Telnet client. That, that's all it really is. It's a presentation layer of the difference. There's no functional difference between the two. 
Okay, next question. In printing barcode labels from Oracle, you talked about printing 50 labels as a maximum from an XML-enabled printer without other software. Why is that? I mean, why don't you uh, take that one sure. and I can uh, yeah. follow if there's anything else I want to add. And 50 is really, it's, an, it's, it's a number that uh, it comes more from our experience rather than any hard and fast rule. And the reason for that is you know, if you're not using a print server in the middle, if you're asking Oracle to print directly to these printers, Oracle sends this uh, label printing jobs directly to the printer memory. And we find, you know, 50 is about the range that a typical printer can handle before it starts choking. And that's really where we decided to draw the line. Yeah, so I, the only thing I would add to that is, is just a, a slight clarification, and that is when we're using the, the print servers, we've got the spooling that we get from the server so that, again, we could have a job that instead of 50 could have 5,000 unique labels, and each one of them would get served up directly to the printer uh, appropriately without any hiccups. Next question. My company has multi locations including non-US. Can Redline provide hardware? Uh, yes, I'll take that one since it's directed to Redline. So we work with a number of companies that are multinationals and it's not uncommon for us at all to have initial deployments be here in the States and then rollouts go to those other countries. Uh, in most com countries we can actually just supply the equipment uh, directly, and what we'll do is we'll ship it to your U.S.-based freight forwarder and all the appropriate uh, uh, export documentation, and they will take care of getting it in country. Uh, there are a few countries where uh, we actually need to engage the manufacturer and bring in a representative who is in that region due to their selling agreements in those countries. So in those cases, we would engage with the manufacturer and say, look, Here's where the customer is. Here's where the site is. Who is a partner locally that we can engage here who could supply this equipment locally? Next question. Our warehouse data collection is all manual now, and the inventory clerks key the data into Oracle. How steep is the learning curve to move into MSCA and using these wireless mobile computers? Not a whole lot. Okay. At the end of the day, the transactions are the same. Right. And it's actually a simpler form of the same transactions. Really, the learning curve is really in getting used to these, uh, the actual physical guns uh, and turning them on that. The actual transactions we find do not take a whole lot of learning from the user perspective, especially if they're already familiar with entering these in the Oracle forms. Okay, next question. Todd's presentation mentioned intrusion protection for wireless. What is this and do I need it? Ah, good question. Well. It really comes to um, the nature of your network and your internal um, network admin will probably be uh, giving you some guidance on your levels of security. Most of the security that we see with people today, uh, we're using something called WEP uh, encryption uh, and we're actually using WPA2, which is a much uh, higher level of encryption. However, we do have some customers who are in uh, extremely intellectual property-based businesses who take extreme measures to make sure that their wireless uh, communications are safe. So in addition to handling that with separating your VLANs and putting up uh, firewall uh, connections basically where they wouldn't be able to get to other areas, there's actually a, uh, a intrusion protection system that allows you to proactively monitor what's going on in the network. So if somebody brought in a Linksys uh, uh, or other small uh, access point from home and said, hey, this will be great. I'll be able to do my work you know, within this 50-foot area. They could, in fact, be creating a major security gap for your company and, and a place where hackers could get in. What this intrusion protection system does is it actually is constantly monitoring not only for rogue access points, but also rogue uh, devices and will take the uh, business countermeasures that you've defined, which could be as simple as disconnected and don't let it get back on the network to, hey, I see something really going on here. I want to send packet storms down to those uh, devices to confuse them, basically, and make them inoperational while you're uh, basically uh, solving that, that gap. And actually, they could even tell you where within your facility this is. So uh, this is definitely a deeper topic than we have time to talk to today, but if you'd like to find out more about that, please contact me after the webinar and we'll be happy to go through that in more detail. Next question, does GUI client need special licensing for the JVM that serves the 
client? Do you work with any JVM provider, or is the licensing come as part of the module? That is a good question, and the answer on that is that the the JVM uh, client itself, if you're an Oracle um, user, is free, uh, and the actual uh, additional pieces that you need is that there's actually some some other software that you need to put in in conjunction with that that does have a fee to it. And uh, again, this is one where it's a little bit deeper topic. If you'd like to review that, uh, I'd say let's take that offline. Okay, next question. Do you support VPN connectivity? Yes, so we absolutely support uh, VPN connections um, and it's not uncommon for us to, you know, sometimes a customer will actually have a uh, a T1 line or some type of a direct connection, but in this day and age with cloud computing, there are lots of VPN connections. In fact, one of the customers that I mentioned uh, in our list is actually running uh, Oracle MSCA in an on-demand mode, which means that it's in a hosted environment and all the connections are, are via VPN. Next question, do you do the location labels needed for WMS? Ah. Very good question. So, uh, yes. Yeah, so, when you're putting up your locations, when you're when you're going live with this, what you'll have is the in Oracle speak uh, the sub inventory locators, which are the actual uh, bin locations that you're putting product in. And yes, uh, Redline actually is part of our preparation services for customers. We'll work with them to actually get their list of sub inventory uh, locations print the appropriate location label for the type of location it is. We have hanging signs for things that are floor stock. We have rack label signs that go on to uh, racking situations and different sizes of each and different um, uh, materials that determine how far away you can scan from. So absolutely can help in that area. Okay, next question. Why would I use Redline and Gaia to do my WMS instead of having our core Oracle team do this work? Uh, let me take the first uh, shot at that, Amin. If you want to add on, uh, go ahead. You know, really what we've seen when we're working with customers is that there's a lot of really good resources out there who have done Oracle ERP uh, implementations and really are solid in the financial and the human resources and some of the other core modules. What you get into when you, when you branch into WMS and MSCA is the need for someone who actually understands in detail the logistics modules uh, and specifically here, WMS and how it is set up, how the rules engine works, and MSDA, and how to make that work. So uh, what we've seen in the past is that if you work with your core team, they may be learning, um, really uh, doing this for the first time. And what we bring as an advantage is by being specialists in this area, we can accelerate their deployment by allowing them to leverage the resources they have, but provide them guidance and the, um, the experience to make sure that as they implement it, they get it right the first time. Amin, you have anything you want to add to that? Yeah, no, I, I think that's a, that's a pretty fast summary. John. I mean, essentially, uh, this is what we do day in and day out. Uh, we bring up a breadth of uh, industry experience as well as knowledge of the product to bear. And we have actually done both models where we've done the complete WMS implementation by ourselves. In some cases where you know there's a pretty strong team that uh, is already in place that knows WMS, knows inventory, we will come in and work with solution architects to make sure the solution is architected properly for that business requirements. So um, that's basically it. You know, this is, like I said, this is what we do, and then this is what we're good at. So. Okay, it looks like the last question is, somebody wants to know if they can get a copy of the presentation today. Yeah, we, uh, we should be able to get you a copy of the presentation. Probably even more valuable is uh, typically within 48 hours we will have the webcast posted on our website, uh, so redlinesolutions.com, as well as we'll have it on this uh, URL that you'll see here where you can register for the next two webinars in this series, the oraclebce.com. So, uh, definitely, uh, we can get you the, the deck if you're interested in it, and uh, probably even better is if you have associates or others within your organization that would get some value in the information that we've provided today, uh, direct them to our site, and we will actually be sending you a confirmation that will give you a link to where that webcast is as well. So with that, uh, we'd like to thank everybody for joining. If you would like to... Uh, uh, sign up for the other two uh, webinars in the series. Again, it's the same location at www.oraclebce.com. And uh, again, uh, we 
appreciate your time today. And uh, if you'd like to, to reach uh, Redline or Gaia, here is our contact information here on the screen now. And uh, with that, uh, we will conclude the webinar for today and hope to see you next month uh, for our deeper dive on WMS. Thank you and goodbye for now.